All right, guys, this is your new lesson. This is 7.2. This is the second lesson, obviously, in Chapter 7. We're going to do ratios and similar polygons. Again, a few tips here. As I'm doing these notes, if you think that I'm going too fast, stop it. Maybe write it down first and then play it so you can hear how I'm explaining things. And then again, pause and stop as, as you go and then play it again as you're hearing me um, explain things and so forth. So it's maybe a little bit easier for you to kind of see. Some of you tend to learn a little bit better by seeing something and not writing and seeing at the same time. Okay, here we go. So the first thing here we have um, is define similar. And it says these are figures that have the same shape but not necessarily the same size are similar. Figures that have the same have the same shape but not necessarily the same size are similar. So here's what kind of this means. Let me kind of show you. And I'll use the triangle, okay? So for the sake of this, so basically this right here is a triangle. And now if I was to clone this, and if I cloned it, well, these are identical actually. I can see these are congruent. But the second I kind of stretch it out, the same proportion, these are these are considered similar shapes because, well, all they are are basically scaled up or they're scaled down. So these are called similar shapes. They're not necessarily congruent or exactly the same, but they're the same shape. Same way if I was to take like a four-leaf clover. Or not four-leaf, maybe three-leaf, right? And if I was to scale this up, Okay, these are similar. Again, same shape, just different sizes. Okay, so take, let's take a look at this. So what are similar polygons? Well, a similar polygon, is, it says, two polygons are similar if and only if their corresponding angles are congruent and their side lengths are proportional. So what does all this mean? Well, let me kind of show you by drawing maybe a trapezoid, and you can draw this along with me as well. I'm going to use a trapezoid from in here. And I'm going to draw this small one right like that. And now I'm going to clone this again because I want to get something similar. But let me make this bigger. Okay. So these two shapes are similar. They're not congruent, but they're similar. So now let's do this. Let's label this with some information so that you can see what they're talking about here when they say that their corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, well, let me label this A, B, C, D just so that I know how to name it. And let me label this over here E, F, G, and an H. Okay, so if these are similar, then that means that, for example, um, I'm going to use those little angle marks inside these shapes. If angle A is similar, well, then it has to be similar to which angle over here? Well, obviously, if I'm looking here, the only thing here is this E. So I'm going to say basically it's congruent to E. And so now let's go to C. C would be congruent to H. And let's say F. F would be congruent to B. So 1, 2, 3. And G would be congruent to D. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? There are similar, I'm sorry, congruent angles. Therefore, it seems to be similar. The one last thing to check, though, in order to make sure that these are similar polygons, is to make sure that the sides... So you want to make sure that this side right here, that let's say the AC side, is proportional to EH. Now, what does that word proportional mean? Well, it means that they all kind of have the same ratio. For example, if this side up here where AC is at is 4, then let's say that this side over here where EH is 8, and then let's say the side up here is 3 with AB, well then what do you think EF should be if it's proportional? Okay, well, 
if I have a 4 here and an 8 here, well, it seems to be like it's 4 over 8. Well, it's like 1 half. Like they're cutting it in half, basically. So then this one would have to be a 6. Okay, and so now let's just say this is a, I don't know, a 5. What would this one have to be up here, the one with the F and the G? Well, that's going to have to be a 10. And let's say this one was 6. Well, then this bottom one would have to be 12. So basically all these are similar polygons because the sides are proportional and the angles are congruent. Okay. Now the book goes ahead and shows you how to write all this stuff out. For example, they'll say angle A is congruent to angle E and so forth. Okay, And then they'll write all four other angles. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to write one. And the same thing, so basically, after saying, and then they're going to show that they're proportional too. Well, how do you show that? Um, well, you can say this. You already saw this, that AC was proportional to EH. I'm going to write it that way. I'm going to say that the 4 was proportional to the 8. And let me do another side. How about the 3 was proportional to the 6? And what else? 5 was to the 10. And the last one was 6 to the 12. Do you guys realize how if I was to take all these fractions that I just wrote down, and if I was to reduce each one of them, what fraction would they all be? I hope you're saying 1 half. That's how you know these are similar polygons. Now, one last thing I do want you to know here is that how do you write this in a math book? Like, how would it look when you know that two things are similar? What symbol do they use? Okay. Basically, the symbol they'll use is what kind of looks like a congruent symbol, but it's not. So you would say A, B, C, D is congruent, just that little mark congruent in the same order, E, F, G, H, okay? And that's it. Let's look at example one. It says, identify the pairs of congruent angles and corresponding sides. Basically, this is just what we did above. All you're going to do is tell me which ones belong to each other um, and which sides belong to each other, and are they proportional? Are they or are they congruent? Okay. So we have uh, an angle here and an angle here. It looks like these two are the ones that are congruent, the N and the Q. So let me go ahead and just set those up real quick. Angle N is congruent to angle Q. Okay, what else do we know is congruent? Oh, angle P is congruent to angle R. And obviously, if we know that those are all the same, we know that the last two, the M and the T, are congruent to each other, too. Now, remember, the sides have to be proportional, okay? So we have all three sides there. Let's just kind of go ahead and write them out in ratios. I'm going to start off with the long side right here, the 2.2 and the 1.1. Basically, I'm going to put 1.1 over 2.2 equals, what's the other one? The one in the 0.5, so let me put the 0.5 above. 0 0.5 over 1 equals, and the last one is the 1 and the 2. 1 over 2. Now if I was to reduce each one of these, this 1.1 and this 2.2, well these are, this is actually half of this one, so this is really a half, and 0.5 over 1, well, that's kind of like saying 50 cents over a dollar. Well, that's that's half. And then this one's already reduced for me, so really that's a half. So based off what you see here, they're all the same ratio, and these are all congruent. So you know these are, con these are similar figures right here, similar polygons, okay? Okay, so basically here, I'm just restating kind of what we did already. 
This thing is basically just a definition that I want you to kind of know. It says define the similarity ratio. It says the ratio of the lengths of the corresponding sides of two similar polygons. Okay, well, let's just say I have two triangles. And let's say they're similar. And let's say also that they have the same angles. Okay, well, you already know that um, they have to have the same ratio. So let me just do a really quick example. Okay, I hope you can tell right away that the smaller triangle are all threes. The big one is all sixes, obviously. If I was to do ratios for each side and match them all up, What's going to be the uh, similarity ratio here for this tr these two shapes? And I hope you can tell me right away, oh, well, of course, Mr. Pueblo, it's 3 over 6 for each one. That means that the whole similarity ratio is 1 half. So that's basically what I wanted, okay? And if you remember from above here, the top example I just showed you, what was the similarity ratio up here? That was 1 half as well. And what was the similarity ratio up here? Well, this was 1 half as well. So, so far I've just shown you all one halves basically, and this doesn't mean that all it's always one half. It just happens that I'm using really small, easy numbers for you guys. Okay. Determine whether the polygons are similar. If so, write the similarity ratio and similarity statement. So that basically is just telling you is to, well, show me that they're the same. Okay, so let's do the ratios. Four to six. And that's for the FE to BA. So let me just write that down. FE to BA is 4 to 6, which is really, oh, what's that? 2 over 3. I was ready to write 1 half, and it's not 1 half, it's 2 thirds. And let's do the other one. FG to BC. And that's going to be 6 to 9. And that's 2 thirds also. Okay, so because these have the same ratio, because these have the same similarity ratio, this is the similarity ratio, okay, then these are similar shapes, okay, and that's all you need to know. This is the last example, okay? This was a short lesson again, because it's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. It says, find the length of the model put to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. Okay, so these are similar shapes here, so I'm going to tell you to set these up like a proportion, basically, okay? This is kind of like elementary math, really, so it's just to kind of get you used to this again. Let's go ahead and set up the sides that are the same. So I know that 1.8 is similar to the 6.3. And let's set up the other part. If I did this one up here first, then I need to put the 5 on top over something that I don't know. I'm going to put an X. Now, remember this to the 7.1 lesson I did, the cross products property? Let's do that right here. It's 1.8 times X is 1.8 X equals, do the other side now, 6.3 times 5. We should know that. 6.3 times 5. Let me just do it over here on the side because you're going to do it too. 5 times 3 is 15. Carry the 1. That's 31. I need to move once. 31.5. All right, so I have 1.8x equals 31.5. Divide both sides by 1.8. Okay, x equals. Okay, now. I hope you don't want me to do all the math for this, because I would hate to be here writing this thing for the longest time trying to figure out long division. Um, but I think you're going to make me, but I'm not. Okay, I'm assuming you know how to move this once over to this side and move this one over to this side, so that you get rid of the decimal. Okay, 315. So do the math. You know how good I am. I'm so good that I'm going to do this math in my head right away. And by the time you even notice, I'm actually going to do this super fast. You won't even know because I'm so super smart. So 315 divided by 18 ends up being 17.5. See how good I am? 
17.5. So there's your answer, okay, 17.5. Um, and that's pretty much the lesson. Yep. That's all I have for you. So that's the notes. Make sure you took down notes for those three examples and the definitions that I gave you throughout the video. Make sure that you paused and uh, wrote as you needed to write, whatever you needed to write, so that if I was going too fast, you slow it down yourself. Okay? Um, the homework for these two sections, um, I will email you information about this, so please be checking your email so that you <coughs> have that information and are not completely lost. Okay? And that's pretty much it. One last thing, for the sake of having a nice little way to end it, let's see what this says. What does the 0 say to the 8? I know you guys know. Come on now. Ready? Uh, let's see if it shows. Nice belt. Ha 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 ha. <clears throat> Anyways, okay guys, that's it. Hope you understood these lessons. And again, if you didn't, then you're coming back to class and write down a little or put a little star next to something you did understand so that you can ask me and we can kind of take care of that in class on Tuesday. Okay, thank you very much.